Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Perfect. So, hi everyone. This is our first day of the weekend for Black in Cardio Week. Yay! The week was amazing. We had a lot of, lot of interesting panel. We had. We've learned so much. We've learned about what can we do to really reach out to our community and make sure that our research is accessible to everyone. We, we, we talk about how can we combine diet and workout to have a better lifestyle and avoid and prevent cardiovascular disease and how can we communicate that to everyone. And sorry, I have to introduce myself first. My name is <laughs> Catherine Tianger. I'm a co-organizer of Black in Cardio and I'm a postdoc at Stanford. And I'm happy to be here today to talk about our craft things. So I will be talking about bread and how to get your weeks with my co-organizer, Chi Chi. And I'm really, really happy to introduce her. So I will let her introduce herself. Hello, my name is Chi Chi. I'm also a co-organizer of Black in Cardio. And today I am here to show you how I like to style one of the many wigs in my wig collection. So without further ado, um let's get this show in the road so um so yeah Catherine um I know that you're currently baking some bread at the moment um that is still in the oven but in the meantime like would you like to share some of your previous collection that you've done in the past and like just give us like some you know little tips on the perfect bread thank you sure um I, I have to, first of all, I have to disclaim, I am a very, very beginner when it comes to bread making. <laughs> so I will start by sharing my screen and then I'll show the bread. I have a couple of bread, I have a couple of, this is, this is, this um, uh, picture here on the left, it's a little bit like my bread collection. I am not a style bread maker. I'm, <laughs> I, I picked this during the quarantine and I found it really, really um, relaxing to just like think about making bread and make all kinds of bread. I love experimentation. So I'm yeah. always looking for the next challenge. So um, I don't kind of ask, did you start baking bread during the lockdown? Because I noticed that all around the world, there seems to be an influx of people, there was an influx of people baking because obviously we're like at home and stuff did you start baking like during the pandemic or was it a thing oh where yes it was like, oh yes oh, definitely. Sorry. oh you started during the pandemic okay <laughs> yeah I definitely started making bread during the pandemic so um I've, I've, like everyone we are locked in and we have to yeah. find like our work and life balance right so um so in the beginning we, we thought about doing some simple bread and then like some regular flat bread because my oven at that time was not that great and then over time we figured okay so it's it's kind of a little bit um it can be boring when you just do flat bread so we have to give ourselves a little bit of challenge and and maybe start some actual bread and here in the u.s the most famous bread to make is uh sourdough and yes one of the most interesting parts with the sourdough is that you don't use a dry yeast. So you have to make your, 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 you have to activate your starter. You have to activate yes. And what you can yeah. see here on the right is me cultivating my starter. <laughs> oh, that's the, so that's the yeast over there. Yes. So this is a yeast which is for the old. So you can see that it's still having some bubble, but it's yeah. not quite ready yet. Uh, but it's getting there. Yeah. Um, so, um, um, yeah. Um, on, on on my collection here, this I have like something about seven different type. Uh, one, two, three, four, five different type of uh, bread. But the one who is featured here is the one in the pot, and this in is like pot. one of the yeah yeah. So in the one on the bottom right. Okay. And this is like one of the sourdough that was the most like with nice, nice, you know, bubble in the middle and nice shape. Yeah. And um, so this bread, I, I, as I say, I love to make some different composition and play around. So I had like a mix of 
a half white wheat and half whole wheat with that one. And then I made okay. my starter myself. So, and, and then- I was gonna ask that, do you like make any like, like dash some little spices and flavorings in your yes. sourdough? Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah. So, I, so you can, if you see the, the, the one on the top here, the top right, the two top right, you yeah. can see a little bit of like a dark spot, but that dark spot is cranberry. So I hope I have some Ooh. picture of that. So I made, a, this was like a mix of a whole bunch of things. I had cranberry, walnut, a whole wheat. Uh, um, then I had some tough flour. I had um, another flour, which I'm blanking on the name. Um, dark flour? Dark rye. Dark rye, rye flour. flour. Yes. Yeah. Um, so this did not show a very beautiful bubble in the middle this way because it has the, all the type of flour that have less gluten component, but it was delicious. It was really delicious. So I'm going to turn into you uh, for a minute because as you said, I have a bread going on. So I just have to go yeah. check to see <laughs> how it's going. Okay. Um, how... How many minutes left for the bread? I think it's something about 15 minutes. So I have to take the lead on now. And okay. I wish I could show you uh, the. I have to take the lead on. And yeah. okay, I will try. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully it will be successful. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole, let me just go to the oh you don't need to, oh do you do you want to do you need to do you want to still be showing your screen or um i i, do, wanna... I just keep my screen sharing I'm okay while well, you get the loveliness okay i don't know if people can see me Catherine. yep can people will people be seeing me i'm not too So I hope we, I will be able to show it. Yeah. Right before I put it back. Okay. Let me know if you can see it. Can you see this? Yes. Well. Yes. Yeah, so this is almost ready. Um, mm -hmm. it, and this has a whole bunch of things, and I will explain later. So I will yeah. go, I will go ahead and put it back in the oven. So okay. let him like get have a nice, a nice, very beautiful um... so now what we what what I, I need to to make it ha, ha, to make happen is just uh, the crust have to be like nicely baked and have yeah. a beautiful, beautiful um and have a very nice um and, and looks like, you know, brown, very nice brownish. Yes, yes. So, oh, you're back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're back. So, so yeah, this is me about my bread. And Chichi, you are making your wigs. It looks amazing. So tell us about Thank it. You. So where do I even begin with my journey of wigs? So... I've been into wigs since I was 17. I'm 26 now. So I made my first wig when I was 17. You know, wow. I don't, yeah, made my first wig when I was 17. I don't know some of some of the people viewing, you know, the old school wigs when you have to use the black bonding glue from the hair shop mm -hmm. and you use a cap and you're buying like the premium two beauty supply store hair, as mm -hmm. you guys call it in the States. So that was the first wig. I remember it was a red bob fringe wig. Um, I don't have any pictures of that to show evidence, but that was <laughs> the first wig I ever made when I was 17. And I guess back then it was usually just fringes or, you know, you part wigs where you have your hair out. But now, you know, the game's changed. There's now lace closures and lace frontals and full lace wigs and everything. So this beauty right here is the lace frontal wig. I mean, I've worn this wig once already. I colored this wig 
last, I actually coloured this wig last year, but originally it was just all this colour. Wow. So it was all just this colour. Yeah. So I've got this colour by putting my hair dye in hot water, dunking the wig in there, leave it for a bit, literally your hair comes out this colour. And then I added this dark pink, you know, I feel like I already used the whole red wig for, you know, Black and Cardio Week, the intro videos, I thought had to kind of like try, you know, give another like reddish wig. So mm. I just decided to just revamp this old wig, just dip this again in hot water with hair colour. And I've got this. And if you guys tune in into the next live, I'll be doing at half nine with my lovely co-host, Adama. This bad boy will be on my head by then. So, <laughs> yeah, I... I mean, I like the way that, you know, I feel like you, I like the way that, you know, you gendered your bread and like you, you, it's like they're personal. So like my wigs as well, some of them, I name them sometimes, you know, there's nothing wrong with me. I just name my wigs sometimes, you know. Oh, Gives that's so cute. So what are the names that you gave to your wigs? So what is the name of that one? I don't know what to call her. <laughs> She's looking like a, like a, like a petal short pink. I don't know. Her? Pinky. Pink, pinky and the brain. Oh, I mean, because it's kind of rose goldish, you yes, know. Yes, that's true. At the top. So that's like, the but then Pinky is a good name. I mean, I have one of my, I named one of my wigs Ariel. Actually, the one, the one that I won the Black and Cardi video, her name's Ariel because she's red. Ariel. Yeah, <laughs> that's named Ariel because she's red. <laughs> and um, what else? I've, I have an Infinity Stones wig because I copied the Marvel comics infinity stones so it's mm -hmm. six all six colors of the infinity stones i put on that wig if i can actually let me see if i can find it for you guys bear with me so it's in this box here of some of my wigs oh my god so you <laughs> okay oh, so this i think i think there is one important point that have to be made here. You made all your wigs by yourself. Um, actually, most of them. Some of them, I bought them, but I coloured it myself. Mm. So, but most of these wigs, yeah, handmade. This is only like half of my wig collection. I still have another bag of like my black wigs. Let me that find those impressive. too. <laughs> that is impressive. Wow, that is wonderful. What? I mean, I guess this is this has saved me a lot of money during uni because I think it was when I was doing when I started my undergrad degree. That's when I I don't know, I think that's when I got into hair a bit more because it's like getting your hair done is expensive. It is I know it's expensive in the US and it's definitely expensive over here in the UK. It's expensive. And on a student budget, it's just not feasible to be going once a month to get your hair done. So good old YouTube. <laughs> helped me like learn how to like make wigs do braids do twists do crochet braids do all of that so yeah it has saved me a ton of money when it comes to paying someone to do my wig but I still wasted a lot of money on actually buying the materials and the resources though so like, if I yeah no go on you ask your question but it's sick it's it cheaper to buy all that and make it yourself right um it is because you can buy or you can buy the same thing as someone, then you'll now pay someone else to make it. The person that's paid someone to make it still spent more money than the person that bought the same hair and made mm -hmm. it themselves, you know? Yeah. And in that way as well, like that's how say that you need a hair for a special event. That's how no one's going to ruin it for you. Because one thing that, you know, matters, I know matters to me, like when it comes to like, my birthday, all of those special events if someone messes up my hair you ruin my day so <laughs> so there's a lot of I feel like as a as a you know inspired as aspiring amateur hairstylist it's like that's a lot of responsibility you have on your shoulders when a client is coming to you wanting something for a particular time because if you mess that up you mess up their birthday they're crying on their birthday because their hair's not laid it's all bumpy and if you yeah. think like that's really on you so um you know, I guess I don't mind, you know, making wigs for people, for my friends, but at the same time, like, I do encourage, like, if you can try and learn how to do it yourself, like, 
in the long run, it will, mm-hmm. you know, be beneficial, you know, to you. So yeah, let me find my infinity stones drink. Obviously it's a bit raggedy right now, but <laughs> Ooh, that is <laughs> it's a bit raggedy right now. Let me try and brush it out. But, yeah. This is the wig that you know Adama was alluding to during our early <laughs> meetings for black and cardio. So there's one that, side, that is so the red, orange, and, and then, then the, the purple, <laughs> green to <laughs> blue to green. Yeah, this wig took me eight hours to color. Wow. Okay, so that that brings me to my next question. Yes. How do you color them so? perfectly you even have like multiple color in a single side like yeah for example, on the on the on the blue side it goes from like purple to to blue to like yeah. green how yeah. do you make that happen so what it is it's it's a very meticulous so what i do you split split your wig in half so example what i've done here but what i'm trying to do here anyway so you split your wig in half. So there's one half here, then you kind of leave the other half. I'm going to pack this away actually because she's really starting to annoy me. Bear with me. But um, oh, so I have to. I have. I'm not cutting you. I'll let you continue. I just have to go check. I think my bread, bread. must be ready now. So right, the next cool. step will be taking it out and yes. and um. So yeah. I'm listening, go ahead. Oh, so, um, so yeah, you split your wig in half, then you kind of, you have to cover one half of it with like cling film or I know saran wrap, cause I watch a lot of American YouTubers. So I pick up on, I pick up on uh-huh. their lingos or saran wrap. So you cover the other half of it to stop colors from getting where you don't want it. And then it's literally just like painting on paper. So you, you just part a section and you literally just paint the color on with your brushes, for example. So you literally paint the color on with like a brush like that, just paint the color yeah. on and then clean your hands in between. So you don't, you know, mix up the colors, paint the next one on, but try and blend if you're doing like more than two, more than one color, try and blend in between. So there's, so it flows seamlessly instead of it being like a harsh mark of like demarcation. Mm-hmm. You do the other color or however many colors you're trying to do in that section. And then that part is done that you just keep doing it like row by row of your wigs until you're done. But then for this particular wig, I did, cause again, it's a frontal wig. It's a frontal wig. So, you take off, you have to part off the frontal area. So I part of the frontal area, then colour that separately because you have to try to be careful with the front also that, you know, the lace here doesn't stain, even though I don't even know this is lace stainage or just colouring off the knots. But mm. yeah, you just have to be, that's why when it comes to using certain hair colours and certain colours like reds and purples, and you're using your stain and, and you're trying to color your lace you have to be really careful so it doesn't get on the lace before you now start having purple lace so you put your head it looks like that part of your skin is purple when it's not so yeah that's that one in the nutshell let me pick out one of my other favorite wigs actually. this is another recent baby of mine Oh, that's this is a recent, really nice. This is a recent baby of mine. Um, so what's her name? I don't know. I call her Cotton Candy. Cotton especially Candy. Pink, Cotton Candy, especially the pink bit at the bottom just reminds me of like, you know, yeah, of the candy floss. Mm. Purple, but this pink bit really reminds me of that. So yeah, this is the same like, usually the same technique as the other one. So obviously there's less colours. So it was a bit more simple. It was a bit more easier because mm-hmm. it wasn't so many colors and it wasn't so much lace either so this is a this is a lace closure yeah 
and then yeah but let me find some of my like black boots because got my whole bag here before i go back in i just want to show you yeah let me see your bread Oh, what did, are those ra are those raisins or sultanas or? Yes, there is a They're lot sultanas. going on in this one. What did uh, you? I'll just let it cool down a little bit. Yeah, because I'm just realized you're holding it with your hand. Like, is that not a hot thing? It's a little hot, but <laughs> you're just holding it. Like, <laughs> my king. It's a little hot. It is, but it's not. It's not too hot. It's not dramatic. Okay. So Catherine, aside from making bread, um, what other like things do you like to do outside of the lab and outside of your postdoc? Well, so my well, my favorite things to do outside of work is actually work out. Um, oh, exercise. I wish exercising. I, had I wish I had that same passion. I don't have that passion. I need to get yeah. it. <laughs> So I'm I'm very much I'm I'm a lot into running and yeah just, uh, just before just before all the end of the world happened I was training for Wait, did you for say before the end of the world did you say before the end of the world <laughs> so that's wait, how wait, we call wait. it like co um Rona, the, Rona. Corona. No, I mean it's the way of saying the shutdown, COVID, oh. and, and so so. But like it's it's almost like, come on, it's almost like it no. was. We saw. No, it, it was it was a lot. It was a Here lot. It was dramatic. Yes. Here it in California, we are, we even find ourselves on Mars with all the fire yeah. that happened. You know, it was it was like yellow all over the place. Oh yes, I rem no, I yes, remember seeing pictures of that fire. I remember right. seeing I've never seen videos of that fire actually oh, in the midst of the pandemic. This oh, Rona yeah. really came on smoke, is what I will say. No pun intended about the fire you talked about earlier, but yeah, she really yeah. came on smoke, like yeah. just shutting down the world for what? But you said you were training for a marathon. Yes, before. so I, I I had like since 2018, I had um an objective for doing two marathons a year. And so <laughs> How, how, long, how long are each marathon that you're planning that you want to do? Uh, my, I am, uh, like, my very first one, I was about four hours and 20 minutes. And then the second one was like four hours. And then the third one was like three hours, 58. Um, okay. what, what was the distance? So it's, um, it's uh, 42 kilometers. 42. Oh, wow. That's a lot. It's 42 kilometers. Yes. Oh, wow. And uh, and I, I I also have an objective of doing a marathon of main city. So I did the Paris marathon, then I did Oakland, oh, yeah. I did San Francisco, and I wanted like I was training for the Washington DC marathon, mm -hmm. and it was supposed to happen in March this year. And unfortunately, everything got canceled. Then, I was so sad. Then when I came. Yeah. But like when it comes to like training for a marathon, like how long realistically does it take you to train for like one marathon? So I I have a habit of going out for a run for yeah. whatever until I feel tired. So um, oh. so on a regular basic, I, I do I do run three times a week, like mm -hmm. something about twelve mile during the week and um to, not twelve mile eight mile, which is something like twelve kilometer during the week. Yeah. And on the weekend, I my objective is to do twelve miles, which is about, which is close to um, to twenty kilometer. Um, oh, yeah, half the distance. Yes, or more. Okay. Yeah. So um, that is a re that that's my base on mm -hmm. when I'm not training. So and then when I'm training, what I do is I usually don't necessarily increase the number of times that I run during the during the during the week. So I usually run three times and I do other workouts. So I like to go to the gym yeah. and just mm -hmm. exercise. So I try to have like five, five day a week exercise. And yeah. so with that, it's really hard to like have a lot of running in, in, in between. But um, so dur during my training, when I'm training for the marathon, I was do a lot of interval training. 
So sometimes oh, it's kind H of going H for like sorry? HRT. 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 Yes, yes. So so you do you, you know you do the laps of like speed running with like slow yeah. down and, and things like that. And then um and on the weekend, what I try to do is I will train myself to run do the long distance, like 18 mile up to 18 to like my like a marathon is 26 mile. It's 42 kilometer. It's it okay. I'm so used to the to the US metric that <laughs> I yeah. would say miles, but um, one mile I mean, is, it's it's about one kilometer, one point six kilometer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so what I would do is during the week, during the week I would do eight mile, and during the weekend I would go all the way to like twenty to twenty three mile, but I won't do the whole distance because okay. I will exhaust myself. And even when oh, I go to twenty, it was it's closer. Um, it's close to the, the, the marathon time, uh, date. Um, but um, I think the idea for someone who is a regular runner is to, to get to start your planning something like four months, four to six months. Four months. Yeah. If you are a regular runner, even three months, is, it's enough. I mean, but if you are a long distance regular runner, so you make your plan three months ahead of time. But if yeah. you are, if you are first time, it has to take a lot four of time. Four to six months. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you're um, first time, it depends because the way I went from short to long distance running, so I started, you know, I started with like 10 miles, um, 10 yeah. kilometers. So, and then I did like a 20 kilometer race and then I did a half marathon race and a couple of half marathon race. And then I was like, okay, I think I can move to the next step. That was a marathon. That was a marathon. Yes. <laughs> and no, that's, no, that's, no, that's good though. Yeah. No, that is, that is good. I'll, I'll be able to uh when everything will come back to normal and speaking of normal when will well, when will that be what oh, what I is going to be the, what is going to be normal anymore like just, i don't know about you in the uk but they, i mean here things are slowly going back to normal but like it's not but should it should they be though uh, but like, but there, there was a lot of restriction, honestly. Um, and yeah. at, at least here, at, in, 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 at around Palo Alto, Stanford, in California, yeah. I still, I'm, I'm still not able to go to work. I, I mean, I'm allowed to, but we still need yeah. to have social distancing. And yeah. it's like, if you really need to go, but if you think you don't need to go, it's better to stay. If you can walk from home, it's better to yeah. walk from home. The thing um, when you go to the restaurant, you see, sorry? No, no, you continue before. I... And then we wear masks outside. We always wear masks outside when we go on a hike, when we go into a grocery store. And then, like, we haven't been seeing friends much because, like, it, you know, you have to pay, you have to be careful. Uh, yeah. When you go to restaurants, it's better to stay out in the outdoor, wear masks yeah. as much as you can, you know. Because yeah. I know here How in, the, in the UK, in the UK, <sighs> child, I don't want to drag no governments up in here, but like, oh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of them ones that you ask different people in the UK, they'll all tell you they don't really know what's going on because it's like, at this moment in time in the UK, it's got to the point where like, for example, Scotland, Scotland, you know, it's kind of part of the UK, but it's obviously a different country from England. It's got to the point where they've taken matters into their own hands. We were doing it our way. Wales, as well, another country in the UK, from what I last heard, they're not actually allowing people from the UK to go to <laughs> Wales. Even though here, me here in Reading, I could get a train straight to Wales in like an hour and a half. So, like, it's just one of them ones where it's just like, we're not allowed to mix households. That's what they call it. We're not allowed to mix households indoors. But people are still allowed to go to schools indoors people are still allowed to go to work indoors like if you can't work because some people generally cannot work from home and yeah. obviously some people they obviously work in essential services like supermarkets retail um the nhs you know so it's, those people have to go to work but then is a thing where it's just like then they don't want us to use public transport but then they're making it impossible for people to drive especially in london because they're now hiking up you know prices of congestion charge for you to be using 
for you to pay to drive in certain areas of London. And it just, I don't, I don't, I don't know why, you know, they think that it's safer for us to mix outside then I don't know what the difference, you know, is like, you know, it was, it's, it's not clear cut. It was more clear cut when we were just straight on the lockdown as much as, you know, not everyone liked. I know some people in lockdown, you know, it did, you know, it can obviously affect, you know, your, your mental, your mental state definitely can affect your motivation to do things. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, this is, is more clear cut. Because right now it's like different parts of the UK on different things. Mm. And it's just like, because I know there's an area near me in Reading, they're now in tier two, which is like kind of in the middle before you've been like on the strict like lockdown. But then it's like everywhere is still curfews for like pubs and restaurants and stuff. So it's just like, but you have to still wear your mask everywhere, you know, um, which I smoke in Reading where I am, most people do do that. So it's not, even though there are, you know, anti-lockdown protests going on, which I... I don't, I don't know. I'm just going to leave you there because I don't like to talk about politics because I don't want to start, you know. <laughs> no, no yeah. but that, that, I mean, it's it's complicated. But I just want to say, yeah. we I just want to remind everyone that we are live. In Yeah, I mean. Please ask us questions, uh, whether it's about what we do um, inside or uh, for our research or what we do outside research. Um, uh Chichi's here to get some tips about how to make your own reads. Um I love making bread <laughs> and I will tell you what is my experience making bread. I love mixing a whole bunch of flour. So I'm happy I'm happy to talk about that. Um talking about bread, I think I have uh the other one is cooling down, so I think it would be yeah. ready for at some point to be seen. But before mm -hmm. that, I want to share this. This other piece of mine, who is, uh, it's, it's, um, it's a brioche. So this is how oh, it looks. Like. Brioche. Yeah. Oh my God, you made a brioche. How did you make a brioche? Um, uh, like, I, you know, it's, it's actually pretty easy. It's much more easy. And, and I don't know, I don't have a, I don't have the machine, you know, to, to and so I do it with hand, but it's pretty easy. It's really well, that that really that looks like the brioche that you know people buy in like supermarkets or you know you right. buy the little the little roll you know the brioche rolls you buy like packs of like brioche yeah. rolls yeah I I I, I want to eat this right now and I'm just staring <laughs> at a picture like this is crazy <laughs> back to my wig I'm not hungry <laughs> I need so, to eat off so, this yeah so brioche is pretty easy to make um it's just like flour um eggs milk i have some like chocolate chips here um but it's it's all about and and, and his and dry his the good thing about this is that you you don't have to you, you don't have to cultivate your own starter i mean you can do it if you want but like the dry his not necessary is pretty good for that so you, you don't yeah. you don't need to do anything else and um so yeah, and it's it's all about mixing the proper. I, I think one thing very important though is to make sure your your dough is not too wet yeah. and, and butter too, and it's not too buttery. It's not less buttery, and uh, and then you um, like you mix it for a long time. Usually, I I, mm -hmm. I mix this for like twenty minutes just to make sure that I'm developing the gluten, you know, and like creating. Yeah fiber so and then I, I will show you another another picture of how these how the how the dough looks like it's I, I made a video of this once but it's it's kind of it's you know do you, you have do you have do you have like is there somewhere where the people viewing can like you know subscribe to a channel or something where like or do you have like a blog or something where you you know post up your recipes and your experiments I, I and whatnot um, I've been thinking think about it. That's a bag. That's a I, bag. I've been thinking bag. about that, but you know, yeah. um, I'm, a, I, I'm, a, I'm, I'm a geneticist researcher. I'm a passive yes. genetic, and I always thought if I have to start a blog, I will probably just do it in that. Talking, I mean, I will be happy to talk about genetic and bread, or, or like what are the structure, like what are the components that you have in the bread, and like 
why some of the bread will have like beautiful shape and a lot of holes inside and some other bread do not because this is and this has been like one of the challenges that I've been taking a lot is I found that like making bread like sourdough bread it's pretty it's it's I mean it's interesting it's nice honestly it's not very hard you just have to be patient to like build your starter Mm -hmm. And then yeah. and there, there is a lot of information out there about bread and how to do it. Um, yeah. So, but the, the thing that I found more challenging is to be able to use a whole bunch of different flour. Like there are a lot of flour that is known. Yeah. And people mm-hmm. just use wheat, what, uh, like, like wheat flour all the time. But yeah. you have so like black rice, you have like tough flour. Salmon. You Salmon. have flour. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so I'm a vegan. I have a vegan flatmate, and he uses the sp- no. Did I say Spelman? Spelt flour. Yes. He uses spelt flour. flour. Yes. He uses spelt flour for his. They even have banana flour, like for people. For like banana. banana. Yeah. It's banana. Everything. <laughs> like plantain flour. Plantain flour. Has yeah. Yeah. Really good. So and and then and then we have we have yucca flour. So like I would love like if I really want I would love to experiment on that and um, like take all these different type of flour and see if I if I'll be able to make a very nice and like beautiful different. shape uh, yeah. a, a bread because I think this open this open the opportunity to a lot of people there there are a lot of people that cannot tolerate gluten but, exactly. but they do love right. eating bread so. Yeah. So I do think if I really want to do something, it should be, and we have a lot of information about bread making and anything else. So mm-hmm. I, if I have to do something, it should be different. But I feel like, obviously, going back to like some of, you know, the panel sessions we talked about, like during Black mm-hmm. and Cardi Week, like diet and food is an important, it's definitely an important aspect of cardiovascular health, you know? So I know the panel yesterday, um, the diet to medicine one was obviously talk about just educating the masses and communicating it to the community so and something that you know I still have to tell myself every now and again like just because you may see that yeah there's lots of people doing one thing but there's space for everyone yeah. like there is there, so you may think oh there's so much stuff about them bread but then it's like you as a you know geneticist have a different community edge do you know what I mean? Because you understand the science of the flower. You understand, um, then you understand the the benefit, the health benefits of certain types of flowers as well. So that like, is definitely, you definitely have a different edge. So you something you should consider. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for reminding that, <laughs> reminding me that yeah. and reminding me that we yeah. always have a spot. I think that yeah. is a good reminder. And, and that's a very good point. So um tell me t- tell us more about what you're doing are you putting well, a lot of like so i've been doing a lot of things so i've straightened one half of the wig let me take let me take her off i've straightened i've straightened one half of the wig you know not the frontal part yet because i have to use more than one tool and other equipment for that mm-hmm. hopefully if there's time you'll see it on the live but like yeah i've straightened one half so I'm now going to move on to the other half. As you can see, this bit is still wavy and this bit is much more straight. You see that she flows as Ooh, well. Wow. So like, yeah, I'm just, you know, just going to straight try and get as much as this done, much of this done before the next, my next live session, <laughs> Adama. I'm looking but, forward um, to the night, like the live session with, with you and Adama because it's yes. Fun. It's your um, idea. That's why you're looking forward to it. Because it's your <laughs> idea. <laughs> That's why it's, it was you. <laughs> it was you. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, I guess, you know what, like, I'm... No, we have to take care of ourselves, right? Yeah, so, like, try and push yourself work. out of your comfort zone as well. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, that's something I feel like, something I sometimes struggle with when it comes to, like, you know, the creative not even just the creative aspect even today i was in the lab today actually wow i was in the lab trying to because i haven't gone to the lab this week that's my own personal problem but like yeah i got to the lab this week so i tried to go today to squeeze in something and i was able to but then it's like even when i went to the lab today like 
you know, someone like me that likes working late at night and crazy stuff shouldn't be given 24 access, 24 hour access to anything. Yes, yes. My friends will be a testament to what I used to do in university in the library. I used to live in that library. But wow. um, yeah, no, because it was 20, our library was 24 hours. So I used to be there. There'll be times my friend will be with me. She'll go back, come back at like 8 a.m. I'm still there in the same spot. But um, even today when I went to the lab, it was just like, I don't know, like that imposter. Benjamin, um, come back. Give, are you? Yeah. No, I saw something come in, but yeah. I was in the middle of like, I, I literally was like, you know that imposter syndrome where it just creeps up and you just <laughs> take it. <laughs> You cheats in a chokehold, even when you're not even from like even me pursuing my like creative stuff. Because I feel like with some of us as like some um, lots of us, you know, like scientists and stuff. Like some of us have like other, you know, hobbies and passions outside of science, and it's just like, you know, I know I personally have been in the, you know, in the dilemma. Do I want to? choose one or the other is there a way I can balance them all um so yeah so me making wigs is just one part of the things that I like to actually do um I like to write as well um and Hold on, let me get this because this thing is really irritating me. Oh. I want to show oh, you. Oh, you went to get the bread. Oh, you cut the bread. Yeah, it's still very hot, but that is how it looks uh -huh. like. I have to find. I'm putting my I'm putting my face up in the camera, guys. <laughs> so I'm. I'm oh, there's, oh, there's, there's, there's cranberries. There's cranberry in it. And walnuts. Yes. And some yeah. fennel seed, but you can't see it. Yeah. No, I think I could see a green, one oh, green seed right. at the bottom next to a walnut, kind of like adjacent yeah. from a walnut. Yeah. So it has like a hole, a big hole in the middle, I think. I, I, I... Was that from the activating of your yeast? Yes, but... I think um, when I was when I was making the bread today, um, mm -hmm. when I was cutting it, I didn't cut it properly. So you have to make like this. You have to do a sharp cut on your dough while you yeah. get it into the into the into the oven. So, but my sharp sharp cut didn't work perfectly. Um, mm. So what what happened is that the air who is here is the air who was supposed to get out. So he got oh. like stuck in right in the middle here. But oh. I kind of like it. It gave a kind of nice shape. I've got a cramp. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> I've got a cramp in my foot. Oh, my goodness. Early this would happen to be getting a cramp on the live. But... Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> okay, now I'm fine. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. But... um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Black and Cardio Week, man. That was a wonderful week. I'm telling that you. was a wonderful week. That was a very much needed week, mm -hmm. you know. Like just like all of the other Black in X movements, they're all needed because it's like there just seems to be a lack of representation across the board and across the globe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. by the looks of it. So and, yeah, so it's it's good to show to the world that we here we do great science. We are we 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 doing amazing job, and we yeah. hope that everyone will see that. And also, more importantly, we want to make sure that our people hear our voice in terms of like helping preventing cardiovascular disease. Yes, because in the yes. end of the day, that's what it's all about. Yeah, exactly. I think we can. Yeah. I think we're getting to the end of our hour. Yes. Yeah. It was a beautiful conversation with you. I know. I wish we, we should be doing we should do this more often, you know. Honestly, like, yeah. Every now and again have little hangouts or whatnot. <laughs> the year. Yeah. 
Um, oh, it was really great, and uh, I'm looking. I'm, I'm. I can't wait. It's what time? What time? It's it's in. It's one so hour. Be, yes, no. It will be at nine thirty BST. So that's one thirty. That's PST. one. Thirty. Yes, that'll be one thirty PST. Yeah, one thirty my time. Yeah. And, and four thirty. Yes. Yes, four thirty Eastern time. Looking forward to it. Of course you're looking forward to it. It is your idea. That is why you're looking forward to it. But yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> thank you guys for all tuning in and getting an insight into me and Catherine, what we do outside of our cardiovascular research. Please stay tuned. There's still more live sessions to come. So we hope you've enjoyed this session and everybody have a great evening. Take care. Take care and see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>